I'm Meredith Hardy. I'm an archaeologist with the Southeast Archaeological Center in Tallahassee, Florida. And we are here at the site of Fort St. Andrews, um, an English colonial uh, earth and palisade fort that was built in 1736 by James Oglethorpe. It was built in about three days and, um, and uh, it was only used, it was only garrisoned until 1742. Archaeologists uh, discovered uh, the location of the fort in 2006. Um, the local archaeologist Carolyn Rock uh, came out here with a group of students and they uh, conducted a bunch of shovel tests and they ran ground penetrating radar across the whole site in order to identify the basic boundaries and they found the location um, at the northwest end of the site that had a big concentration of 18th century artifacts that you know, really tied this point to the occupation of, by the English soldiers in the 1730s and 1740s. And in 2007 and in 2009, uh, archaeologists from the Southeast Archaeological Center came up here and conducted um, a bunch of block excavations. They opened up a large area of the site in order to identify um, any features to see if how much of the fort was actually left here on the point. Uh, they ended up finding part of the um, a trench and part of the palisade. Um, but the big question was which side of the fort uh, had they discovered? Was it the north side or the south side of the fort? If it's the north side of the fort, then we could be really lucky and have most of the fort here. But if it was the southern side of the, the southern palisade wall, then unfortunately it would appear that most of the fort um, had eroded off of the bluff. So in 2011, uh, the Park Service archaeologists returned to the site and in order to really identify which Palisade line we were looking at. Was it the north side or the south side? Um, we found an extension of the trench that actually began to turn at an angle, um, which began to suggest to us that it was actually the southern Palisade line. And now we're back here in 2014 um, to hopefully find the end of that trench and um, to see where, uh, where the point of that trench is and to see if this was actually a square-shaped fort or as some um, people recorded back in the 1730s, a star-shaped fort. Hi, I'm SEAC Archaeological Technician Eric Besmick. Uh, I'm in this hole to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, the main reason why we excavated this unit, this is a two by one meter unit. Uh, the main reason why we dug it was to find this trench that we find here on the, in the floor of our, of our unit. So looking at the profile, you can see we have sterile subsoil here, and then you notice the the dark soil as it as it slowly curves down into the the floor of the unit. This would have been the trench wall, the trench that the the, the British soldiers workers would have dug when they were creating the uh, the footing for the, uh, the the fort's palisade, if you will, and then they would have brought in this this midden soil, this dark midden soil with all the shell in it and use that as fill to bolster the wall to, to actually create the walls of the fort. All right, so unfortunately it looks like maybe up to two-thirds of Fort St. Andrews has eroded. Um, and it ha looks like that this happens in punctuated spurts. A big storm will come, it'll erode more of the bluff, trees will fall pulling down more of the site and then m more of the site comes down. And then there might be a few years where there's no erosion at all. Um, but here is a good uh, viewpoint of just how much erosion is going on. You can see that the trees have pulled down a lot of the shell and a lot of the artifacts uh, from the top of the bluff, which is where the site is, of course. Um, if you want to pan up, you can see just how much shell is actually coming out of here. As archaeologists, we have a responsibility, a duty actually, in order to, um, to tell the stories of um, what it is that we're doing and why we do it, uh, to make accessible to the American people um, the history of our country and how we help interpret that history by using science. Um, sites like this are a bit off of the beaten path for most tourists to the island and for most people in general. A lot of people, many, many people never make it here to Cumberland Island. Um, but they want to learn about it, and so um, part of our part of our job is to find out as much information um, to inform history, to inform people about what happened here, 
uh, not just on this island, but for Georgia, for the coast, and for the southeast, and then um, tell that story to as many people as possible. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll be able to